Some technology doesn't announce itself. It doesn't roar, crackle or flash. It just works, quietly, stubbornly, saving lives in places where death seems, well, contractually guaranteed. And in the dark, fuel-soaked lifeboats of World War II, one of the most unassuming devices ever built turned into a lifeline. If you've never heard of the Dunlop No. 10 catalytic lifeboat stove, buckle in, because this tiny metal cylinder is one of the most underrated survival innovations of the entire war. It burned without flame, heated without fire, and kept men alive in situations where lighting a match was basically volunteering to explode. No drama added. That was the reality. Let's get into the story historians rarely tell. World War II lifeboats weren't peaceful little rowboats drifting in cinematic moonlight. They were cramped, overloaded, and often covered in a film of aviation fuel, diesel, lubricants, or whatever else had washed off a sinking ship. Survivors were jammed shoulder to shoulder, soaked to the bone, shivering under Arctic winds. Now picture someone trying to light a kerosene stove in that mess. One flame. That's all it took to turn the craft into a floating funeral pyre. But heat wasn't optional. Survival doctrine demanded it. Men needed warmth to stay conscious. They needed to melt ice into drinkable water. They needed to sterilize tools and soften rock-hard rations. Without heat, the North Atlantic didn't forgive. The Navy needed something safe, something controlled, something almost impossible to misuse, even while hypothermic. So an unlikely hero stepped into the war effort. Dunlop. Yes, the tyre company. Dunlop became responsible for a catalogue of emergency gear, but the number 10 stove was the quiet superstar, a catalytic heater the size of a tin that produced life-saving warmth without ever forming an open flame. Here's the magic behind it. The stove ran on alcohol fuel, usually denatured alcohol packaged in gelled or solid form to prevent spills. Instead of burning the alcohol in the normal sense, the stove passed the vapours over a catalyst, typically platinum or palladium layered onto a mesh or plate. Add a brief warm-up spark and the catalyst took over. The alcohol oxidised silently. No flare? No glow, no flicker. Just steady, reliable heat radiating outward like a warm heartbeat in the cold. It was as close to controlled combustion as 1940s engineering could get, and honestly, it still holds up. This wasn't some laboratory gimmick. It worked. It worked in storms, in frigid seas, in supply convoy wrecks, and in life rafts where every single breath tasted like gasoline. There are scattered accounts from merchant mariners and downed airmen describing heat tins that seemed like they shouldn't be working. Men cupped their hands over the metal, expecting to see flame, and saw nothing. But the warmth was there, and that warmth mattered. Survivors adrift near Greenland reported using catalytic heaters to keep frostbite at bay until rescue arrived. Other crews used them to warm food and melt ice during long, miserable drifts after U-boated convoys went under. Hypothermia doesn't wait for sunrise. It hits fast, hits deep, and once it takes hold, rational thinking collapses. The Dunlop stove wasn't, you know, exactly luxurious. It was more of a physiological defence, honestly. 
It provided psychological comfort, a sort of quiet anchor securing men to life out there. And because of its design, even the least trained sailor could operate it. You just insert the alcohol source, trigger the catalyst, close the lid, and then, well, let chemistry do the heavy lifting. The unit itself was compact and built to survive impact water exposure and rough handling. Perforations allowed vapour flow and oxygen intake while the internal chamber kept the catalytic core isolated and stable. Sailors could place it in the open tucket into a ration box as a mini radiant heater or, you know, slip a small pot over it to warm liquid. Best of all, it produced no smoke, no sparks and no bright signature visible to enemy patrols. Fuel rationing remained the only real challenge. Alcohol had other uses, sterilisation, cleaning wounds and sometimes bargaining in rare rescue situations. So training emphasised careful timing, short bursts of heat at critical intervals rather than continuous operation. Turn it on when morale drops. Turn it on when fingers stop responding. Turn it on when ration biscuits feel like stones. Every decision mattered. You know, this isn't just a relic story. The principle behind the Dunlop No. 10 still applies today, and honestly, anyone serious about preparedness can recreate its logic using modern materials. Catalytic combustion is still used in backpacking stoves, emergency heaters, and military ration warmers. The method is the same, really. Controlled oxidation on a catalyst, running on alcohol-based fuel. A modern survivalist can take the concept and build a safe indoor heat source by, well, first using a commercially available catalytic burner element then feeding it a regulated alcohol vapour source. Next, housing it in a metal enclosure to concentrate the heat. And finally, allowing oxygen exposure only through controlled vents. That's the same chemistry that saved sailors back in 1942. It's also how you can warm your hands inside a snow shelter without advertising your location with a visible flame. The lesson is straightforward, really. Fire isn't always the hero. Sometimes the real hero is heat, quietly delivered, precisely controlled. Most people, you know, assume World War II survival gear was pretty crude. But the Dunlop No. 10 stove was anything but. It actually embodied a philosophy of intelligent design in chaotic conditions. It was part of the same survival ecosystem as the Gibson Girl emergency radio, vacuum-sealed rations, freshwater stills, and those compact medical kits. It was proof that wartime engineering wasn't just about tanks and bombers. It was about giving ordinary men a fighting chance against the sea. Sadly, not many of these stoves survived past the era. Many just rusted into obscurity or ended up, well, mislabeled in private collections. But for historians, this small device is a window into just how much care went into naval survival planning. And for survivalists, it's a masterclass in flame-free heat that honestly still earns respect. If this deep dive into forgotten war tech lit a spark for you, make sure you subscribe to History HQ and share this with someone who loves real survival engineering. Because keeping these stories alive is really how we keep history breathing.